Hello everyone, my name is Quentin Rossetto and today we are going to do in a follow-up from my previous tutorial another type of kaleidoscopic pattern using a Voronoi fracture. The main point of this one is to be able to show you the parameter interface that wasn't visible in the previous tutorial. So, let's see what we're going to build together. We're going to be able to create this kind of pattern, choosing how many times uh, our shape is repeating from twice, you can see the symmetry, to as many as you want. We'll be able to choose how many points there is. Uh, we'll be able to choose how relaxed those points are, aka how well uh, spread on the geometry they are. Uh, we'll be able to control the roundness of it, uh, the color, and as well the animation. So we'll be able to animate this one, choosing how fast it goes. And on top of this we'll add some noise to the position of the point to add another level of complexity, which is even more visible when the animation is at zero. So let's get started. I'm going to start from an empty scene. And <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm at home on my personal computer, so my interface is a little bit different from the basic one. Uh, what I have is the parameters uh, are in the middle of my window. I have two parameters. One is going to be used to keep the control always visible and my network editor is on the left. First thing we're going to do is create a geometry node and dive right in. I'm going to need a null uh, to store all the parameter I want to use to control the animation. So let's create a null, call it control, and give it, using the C, a nice color to make it look like it's important. Let's click on the geared wheel and go to Edit Parameter Interface. Here we can choose all the type of parameter we want. And here are the ones that are created. So far there is nothing. Let's change that. So first parameter I'm going to want is how many section my kaleidoscope has. So it's going to be an integer. Let's call it S for section and give it the label section. I'm going to go to the range and limit the range in the minimum value to 2 because if there is no two sections then there is no symmetry and what's the point. Let's put the lock on it so we can go under it and let's create another integer. This one is going to be the number of points. Let's call it pitinum and the label is going to be point number. Apply. Uh, next one is going to be uh, the relax iteration. How much do I want to uh, spread out the point? That's going to be whoop. That's going to be another integer. Let's call it R iter, relax iteration. Next parameter is going to be the animation speed. That's going to be a float. I call it A speed. A speed and the level is going to be animation speed. Apply and accept for no. We'll add more later. So I have my two parameters. What I'm going to do is on the bottom one I'm going to pin it 
so that when I'm going to be interacting on other node, this is always going to be visible. First thing we need to create is our base geometry. It's going to be a circle. And in my view, I'm already in the front view, but if you're not, let's do space 3 to be on the front viewport. I'm going to add some division, let's say 64 to have something pretty round. And I'm going to scatter a bunch of points on this circle. How many points? Well, the number I will uh, put in my point number. Let's start with something like 100 and see from there. Right click, copy parameter, right click, paste relative reference. Let's do the same for the iteration. Right click, copy parameter, relax iteration, paste relative reference. So now from here I can control how well spread my points are and how many points I have. Okay. Next thing, uh, I'd like to create an ID attribute uh, for each of my points. For this, I'm going to use a point wrangle. Let's put it after the scatter and call it set ID. Within it, it's going to be pretty easy. It's going to be I at ID, so an integer ID is equal to at pitinum, which is also an integer. Now we have two attributes, P and ID. After that, I'm going to create a transform node that's going to be used to do my animation. Ooh. And let's call it animate. Animate is going to be a rotation in the Z axis. And the animation is going to be based on the frame uh, number. So let's put at frame with an F mm, uppercase. And if we click on play, we can see it's animating. It's animating pretty fast, so I'm just going to click on the real-time toggle so it's not going to go faster than 24 FPS. Next thing I want to do is control how fast the animation is going with my animation speed. So let's click, right-click on the animation speed, copy parameter, and after my frame, let's add a multiply and then a face relative reference. So it's going to be equal to the frame multiplied by the animation speed. If the animation speed is zero, it's not going to move. If it's above, it's going to move more or less fast. Cool. Now let's uh, break our circle using those points. For this, it's going to be a Voronoi fracture. First input is going to be your circle. Second input is going to be all points. Put the view on it. We can see that it worked well. Let's change a few of the parameters. First thing is no need to create interior surface since we're only working on a plane. Uh, second thing is I'm going to add a little bit of cut plane offset not have them all uh, stuck to one another. Looks better with a little bit of uh, room. Let's go for 0 0.01 for no. And third thing is I'd like to transfer the point ID to my new primitives. So let's go on to output attributes, primitive cell points, uh, and the attribute is going to be ID. If 
If I check here now, we can see we have an ID attribute on each of our uh, piece based on the point that created this Voronoi piece. On to uh, the symmetry now. How are we going to do the symmetry? It's going to be a bit different than last time. Uh, I'm going to use a clip to cut it on the X direction. So I'm only going to be left with half of my circle. And what I'm going to do now is rotate this geometry using the Z axis by uh, the 360 divided by the number of section divided by 2. Let's do it and you'll understand why. So I've cut, let's add a transform. And so I said I'm going to rotate it by 360 divided by what? By my section parameter, so copy parameter Base relative reference. It's turning it 180 because I only have two sections. Let's put more so it's more visible. Like eight. 360 divided by my parameter divided by two. Now I'm gonna use another clip. Let's copy our first one. Nope. And this time in this clip, instead of cutting, uh, instead of keeping everything above the plane, we're going to keep everything below the plane. And we're left with this slice of pizza. Now that we have this, we're going to mirror it. And now we're going to copy it in a circle by as many section that we have. Let's put a copy transform, copy the section parameter, paste it in the total number, copy the total number, copy parameter, and in the rotate, in the Z axis, let's put 360 divided by pace relative reference by this parameter which is called NCY and BAM there's our uh, there's our kale kaleidoscope uh, the color we can see right now is based on the ID attribute because I clicked on it let me click again so we don't have it anymore let's add a fuse to make those pieces one And let's add a null at the end to say that's the end of our graph. And that's basically uh, that's basically it. So that's the base for a Voronoi uh, kaleidoscopic uh, pattern. You can see it animating. You can choose the number of points and how relaxed they are, as well as the animation speed. Now that we have the base, let's uh, clean our graph a little bit. Uh, I can see that all of this is uh, to create the kaleidoscopic uh, piece. So I'm going to put it in a box so that we can see that the kaleidoscopic sections, everything that's going to happen here is going to be the point, uh, point source. with the E at the end. And that's it for now. So 
so it looks a little bit more clearer. We start from a circle, put a bunch of points on it, give to each point an ID, rotate those points around the Z axis, use those points to break our circle into a bunch of pieces, then cut a small part of our circle based on how many sections we have, mirror it so we have the symmetry in the middle and then use a copy transform to complete the circle. I refuse to delete uh, the doubled point on the edge of each section and that's it. Let me change my view from a uh, smooth wireframe to just smooth so we don't see the wire anymore. And uh, let's continue uh, tuning this up. So first thing I want to do is add some color to make it a little bit less dull. The color is going to be just after the Voronoi fracture. I'm going to use a primitive wrangle for that. And let's call it set color. First thing I want to do is generate a random number based on uh, my ID. So let's create a float, local float that's going to be called rando. And it's going to be equal to the rand function of at ID. Second thing I want to do is create the CD attribute, which is our color at CD is equal to, let's use a ramp to set it up, CH ramp for channel ramp, first its name, color, second its attribute, rando. Close the parentheses, the point comma at the end, and let's hit plus to create this parameter. So we can see it working, we have different shade of gray uh, for each part but I'd like to have some color because it's not the 1920s anymore. For that, I'm going to have to change my uh, ramp and have it from spline to color. There is no way to do it here. For this, we're going to have to edit the parameter interface. Let's go on the gear, edit parameter interface, the color from float to color, apply, accept, I know it's all black. I'm not gonna spend time setting up the color. I'm gonna use one of the presets here. Let's use the infrared. And if you're on Houdini 19 following this, uh, congratulations, you're gonna have a lot of other presets with a bunch of nice color. But that's gonna be good for me. Cool. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is add uh, the bevel so that I don't have uh, such sharp angles on my pieces. That's going to be done uh, before the kaleidoscopic section. So let's have some space. We're going to create a poly bevel. Put it here and put the view on it. So this poly bubble is going to be on the points. Let's put a small value for no. That's a big value. Let's go for 01. And let's add some division. Let's say 5. And if I only look at the wireframe, it looks nice and smooth. Let me make it even a bit bigger so we can see it's smoothing it all right but uh, since there is no uh, inside uh, points and we are working with polygons that have a bunch of of points it's creating some artifact a uh, simple way to get rid of this artifact is to use um, a remesh on it or divide. Let's let's put a divide. Uh, the divide is not working, so let's put a remesh. 
Think their shoes are working well. Uh, we can see we have a small problem is that it's changing from one frame to another. But in this case, it's not going to be a problem for us. If I don't see the edge, I don't see the problem. Yadida. Okay, so we have the bevel. No, let's put it in a small box so it's two one. Yep. Let's put this one and this is my bevel. Okay. What's the next thing I'd like to do is uh, add some noise to my point position. Right now, it's staying pretty stable. It's nice, but I'd like to have a secondary motion. So that's a shape change over time more than it's already doing. What I'm gonna do is uh, animate after the animation I'm going to add uh, an attribute noise which is going to make my point move in Y and X position. So let's create an attribute noise, put it after my animates. And this attribute noise is a bit custom because uh, I don't like the default version. Let's go back to the factory default. So you'll start normally with something like this vector on the CD. I'm not going to want to affect the CD. I'm going to affect the position of my point. Beam, it's changing what I see because if I look at those points, I can see they went all the way up in Y positive and X positive. Why? Because the range value for now are just in positive. So we're only adding a positive value. Let's change that to zero centered value. And let's change the amplitude uh, and put zero in Z. We don't need the point uh, moving in the Z direction since we're only working on a plane. So I put zero in Z. And now it's staying flat. Let's put, uh, I'm going to put the animation speed to zero so it's not moving anymore. And what I like is to uh, animate and this noise. How can I do this? It's simple. Let's click on animate noise. Now we can see it move around. It's moving a lot, so let's bring the amplitude down a little bit to something like 0.2. I'm going to want to uh, smooth out this noise by removing the roughness and I'm gonna uh, increase the pulse duration to have a change that are slightly less frequent something like three we can see let's rename it that's noise for P noise P and let's look at the out see what it does Yes, yeah, it's cool. Okay, so that's a basic. That's basically it. We're gonna uh, adjust our control to add all those new parameter to the uh, to the control. So for that, I'm gonna open the parameter interface, edit parameter interface. And what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to create parameters here to link them to the outside because those parameters already exist. What I want to do is take those existing parameters yep, that are here, for example, and bring them in. But if I try to do this, let's uh, start with a bevel. For example, if I try to take a distance and bring it in, it's not letting me do it. Problem while creating a node is outside subnet. It doesn't want you to be able to link a node to another node when they're living in the same context. For example, here it's Geo1. However, if you still want to do this, you can click on this gear and uncheck 
forbid linking parameter from outside this subnet. And now I can take whatever parameter I want, for example, distance, and bring it in. I'm going to bring distance, I'm going to bring division, and I'm going to create... Uh, I'm going to create a, um, a folder to put them in. So this folder is going to be a folder named uh, bevel. B. It's going to be a simple one. So let's take distance and division and put it in. Let's hit apply, not accept. We don't want to close this window. And now we have our bevel. What else would we like to have? Well, uh, we'd like to have the color. So let's go on set color. Grab our color ramp and bring it in. Up. Apply. And now we have our color here. Uh, I'd like to uh, work on the animation noise now. So first thing I'm going to do, since it's going to be about animation, I'm going to take my animation speed, bring it at the bottom of this fly. So it's after the color, after the bevel. And I'm going to go on my noise. There is three things I'd like to have. I'm going to take the amplitude. Uh, the element size and let's add on top of this pulse duration if there is any other parameter you'd like to have feel free to add it that's enough for me I'm gonna put this into a folder called animation let's put everything in it and for the noise I'm gonna put it in a another folder called animation noise I'll take my three parameters put them in the folder let's change the type of our folder this is gonna be uh, a simple one and simple one as well hit apply and now we have our animation, animation speed with the animation noise. Mm, last thing I'd like to do is uh, maybe I don't want to have uh, the animation noise. So maybe uh, I'd like to have no noise, put the amplitude to zero, and it doesn't uh, change my uh, kaleidoscope. But uh, I would like uh, for Houdini to not compute this uh, node. Right now it's not really uh, resource uh, intensive, but just to be smug about it, I'd like to add a switch before and to be able to check in my control if I want or not the noise. If I want the noise, then it's gonna switch to, my, to compute my attribute noise and it's going to show my uh, parameters in my null. Oop, I clicked here, that's why I wasn't seeing it. So, uh, I'd like to add a switch. After my noise, I'm going to take the animate, bring it in, and switch in my switch the two input. So that first input, aka uh, zero is animate. Second input, input one is animate and then attribute noise. Let's put the switch into the point source. And let's go back to uh, my parameters interface. I'm going to add a toggle after the animation speed. And this one is going to be called a noise for animation noise. Hit apply. So now in our control, we have a little toggle here. 
and we're going to use this toggle to control our switch. Let's click, right click on the animation speed, copy parameter on the switch, face relative references. So now when it's unchecked, we have the first input and we're ignoring the attribute noise. When it's checked, yep, did it work? When it's checked, nothing is working because I didn't copy the proper parameter. I want to copy a noise, not a speed. All right, and now it's working. You can see the input. One is a dotted line, one is a full line. That's the active one. And check it, first input, check it, second input. And now, to be even more smug, uh, I'd like to make those parameters under here disappear when my animation noise is unchecked. For this, I'm going to go on my folder, and uh, here I have uh, the, op the possibility to hide it when, when what, when I uh, set a condition. The condition is going to be written between brackets, and the condition is going to be when a noise is equal equal to zero. Hit apply. And look at this. If I unchecked animation noise, I don't have the parameter anymore. Except I think I'm done here. Uh, maybe I can bring one last parameter from my scatter, which is a global seed, and bring it all the way up. This way I can change uh, the, repart the position of my point and maybe control some other parameter with it and later on if I decide to improve this. So this is it. Let's clean a little bit our graph, bring it this down a little bit, resize this one up, come on. Uh, Get away you. Up. This go down here. This come. Sorry. That's my mistake. This was before. It's a color. This one is in there. This one is in there. Uh, we have the point source of our noise or circle. It's all nice. Let's put some different color just so that it looks more interesting. Da, do, da. And this is it. Let's check it out. We have a global seed. It's changing uh, the overall look. We can change uh, the section from 0 to 10, the point number. Ah, that's something I could change. I'm going to uh, add more point number. So go back to the interface. And on point number, I'm going to say it's going to go between 0 and 400, for example. Apply, accept. Did it work? Point number 0, 400. OK, OK. I don't know. It's not working here. Let's put 400. Oh, that's new. Point number. Uh, I'm changing the section. Of course, it's not working. That's the point number. OK, that's working well. The iteration, that's working well. Uh, the bevel, I can uh, adapt this a little bit as well. I see uh, in this case, at this size, I'm not going to want any value higher than something like 0.1. Uh, I think above 0.1, there is nothing more happening. So let's change this. Max is going to be 0.1. Apply, accept. I like it when I use the whole slider. Okay, division, yeah. The color, it's working. 
to let's see the animation yeah the animation is working let's see for the noise noise is working uh, same for the amplitude I don't think I want it to go up to 10 it's a bit too fast for me let's bring it down to let's say 5 uh, same for the element size 5 apply accept stuff false duration the bigger it is the slower it gets okay and with a bit of animation speed There's our kaleidoscopic effect. So, I hope you liked it. I hope uh, this will answer uh, some of the stuff you couldn't see on the kaleidoscope-ish pattern. And that will be all for today. Uh, thank you all for following it and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.